last lecture and then it will also continue with the lectures on arithmetic of Calabi our manifolds. Is there a pointer? I don't have a, a pointer. Is there a, some, some sort of a... Where is it? Okay. So, um, after two lectures of quite a bit of geometry, I mean, we're going to start going really uh, more and more into the arithmetic of the calabi yau manifolds. Um, this is, this is a, um, the, the painting on a base, of a Ma Maya, from, from Mayan base. I mean, uh, um, reliable sources tell me that what is happening here is that these are, these are scribes and they are discussing arithmetic. <laughs> so it was quite appropriate to, <laughs> to start this, this, this third lecture with this, with this picture. Um, so, okay, so, um, so last, let me, let, me, let me go back a little bit to what we were doing, to just, just as a reminder, right? So um, we are computing rational points of, of, uh, for, uh, for families of, of calabi manifolds, right? So, um, so particularly we're taking calabi hypersurfaces, um, so just one polynomial, with the funny polynomial P, Psi is that this our parameter, which represents a complex structure parameter. It's an algebraic parameter, a coefficient in, a, in the polynomial. And we are going to take Psi to be, to be in Q, right? And the questions that we, have, we, we, are, we want to discuss in this lecture, so we, uh, we are discussing, is, is how many solutions of this equation are there with, with, with rational X, and how does this number vary with Psi? But of course, this is not, this is, this is impossible. I mean, this is a very hard question, as I said. So, but what we are trying to do is to, to do this over, instead of over Q, to do it over finite fields. And the aim, we, uh, once we compute these numbers, of course, we can put them together in the generating function, which is the zeta function. So the aim is compute these zeta functions and, and, and L functions for these, for these um, hypersurfaces. And I will do it, I will illustrate everything with an example. Um, and at the end of last, the, the, the last lecture, I will give some references uh, that, uh, that have more on, on this. So, so this is the example that we have been working on, right? So it's the one parameter family of quintics in P4 with this defining polynomial. The x's are the homogeneous coordinates on, on, on P4. Right. So, so I ended last lecture uh, with, a, with a preliminary um, answer to the question of how many rational points there are. So I called it a zero for the result because uh, what we did is a computation mod p. I mean, we are aiming at a computation that is exact. Right? We want the number, not just the number mod p. But this is, again, interesting to see because it's so easy to see how, how what this number is mod p. And I convince you that, that this number can be computed using this, this formula, this little formula here. Um, so, and I uh, would encourage you to put the polynomial in there and get the, the result. I actually have some, some notes uh, coming now for how to, how to go from here to there, right? But let's look, uh, let me just comment on the, on the result first. So what, what you get is, is a number, this, you get this, right? For each, for each lambda, for, each, for lambda, remember, lambda is related to psi by this formula, right? So, so, so we get the, the, the number mod p, uh, which is given by this, by this formula, right? For each, for, each param for each manifold in your family, you can write down the number. And it happens, it's an at the moment, it's just an observation, it happens that this, this, this is the same uh, in, in some sense to, to what we call the fundamental, the fundamental period in, in, in a previous lecture, right? But, the, but truncated, truncated to, so, so P over five square brackets is the integer part of, of, of P over five. So it's a truncated, what I would call a truncated period, right? We will see more on, on, on the connection between these numbers and periods um, um, in what's coming. So, so we, go, we, 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 we show the details of the computation in this paper that is 15 years old, right? It's in 2000 and uh, it, was, it was published in, in 2000. Um, and in, it, this is in section four, 
right? So it's a zero thorough there. And what, so, ha. So, um, is that good, the, the side? Okay. So, uh, so this is the, the, so we did this computation to, to zero thor there, right? So this is the formula, right? And what you do, now you put here the, 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 our favorite polynomial, right? The one that we have been working on. And, and um, what happens um, is, is the following, right? So you have, you have the formula, so new, of, in, well, the, the notation is slightly different from the one we're using in the lecture. So the first term here, is one some uh, the, 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 this first term gives you a, a factor of p to the fifth, right? So that we can ignore because we're computing mod p. And then, so, so we have to deal with, with, with this, minus the sum over x, f p to the fifth, uh, x, I mean all the x's, I mean I want to put a bar underneath. So to say writing, I'm going to, to say that x on the bar is that. And so then we need to insert here the polynomial, right? So we have, we have the sum of xi to the fifth minus, um, oops, minus five psi. Sorry, people have been complaining about my psi. So psi, so the, and the product of all the x's to the p minus one, right? So now we, kn we know how to do these sums, right? We do the, the binomial expansion. And by doing, we just, so that, so that takes me from here to the next, the next step here, right? So I'm going to, for the, for, 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 just, for just to give you an idea on how, how to get the answer, I'm going to compute some, that, something I'm called new star, which is the sum over fp star instead. In, so I'm going to ignore uh, all the, po the, 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 the possible, the, the, the value zero for each of the x's, right? So, uh, because I can do that, um, one can add those later. So it doesn't matter, and it's easier, right? So, so, so here we ignore this term, so we sum our fp to the uh, star, right? So here is wrong, we should say star, because we, are, we have x to the something, and n can be zero, so that, that's, so that's not right. So it, it should say star there. So, so, so using the binomial expansion, you go straight from here to there, right? That's it. So, so then from, and then from here to here, you just use some identities. For example, p minus one factorial over p minus one minus n factorial mm -hmm. mod p is just, you can prove that it's just minus one to the n times n factorial, right? So, so uh, you use that to go from here to there. You also use the fact that a to the p minus one is one mod p, as we discussed in a previous lecture, right? So, um, so for example, um, uh, minus five psi to the p minus one is one, right? So, um, and then what? Well, and then that takes us from here to there. Uh, we ignore the term p minus one. One can prove that that's p to the fourth, so we ignore it mod p. And then, um, then, let's see. Then we do the sum, right? We do the sum over the x's, right? Oh, sorry, I went too far. We do the sum, right? We do this sum now. The sum over the x's, so we have, we have to sum here, you, from here to there. And we use this fact that I mentioned also last, last lecture Right, so, um, so using that together with this, you, you get straight into this, into this formula, right? So it's just a combinatorial, it's a very simple um, um, uh, compute, image, really, really almost, almost, almost trivial, right? Computation that takes you to this. I, we did it here for the case in which five doesn't divide P minus one, but you can correct it easily and you get the same, the same, the same answer, right? So, Mod p, we get this, which is a truncated period, right? The, the moreover, this is the fundamental period that we discussed previously. Okay, so um, so this was by po popular demand, I should say. <laughs> People were asking to see this this computation. So um, so okay, but now so now we're going to do something much harder, right? Whoops. We're going to do something much harder, which is what, what's happening. Um, 
Why can't you see the... Thank you. <laughs> yeah, so, 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 so now, but we, as I said, we want to count the pounds exactly, right? So it's very tempting to, so, so okay, so we want to count this number exactly, right, over, over FP, right? So, so it's a definite number. So we expand, right? So we have, the, we, are, we have computed this number, and uh, we, can, we can now compute the, the, the first correction and so on, right? These, these news, of course, will take values between zero and p minus one, and we evalu evaluate to higher orders. So, um, so just historically, what we did, not advisable, is to try to correct that formula. We corrected the formula, right, uh, so that this will actually count the number, mo the numbers mod p squared, right. So all you need to do is to put a p here, an extra p, an extra micro p there. Right, so and that's that it's obvious that this will do the counting, right? So, for example, when when p it, for, for, for a given x here, the p is not zero mod p, then this of this this to the p minus one it will be one mod p, but then when you take the power p, this will give you one mod p squared, right? So 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 this is in fact doing the the, the counting that we want, but if you just if you as, I mean, in, in really stark contrast, contrast with the previous computation, this is very hard. It took us, it took us a, 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 a months to, to get it right, and uh, uh, we did in the end, um, but it was time to say that we didn't want to do it to the next order. So, but we still did some numerics and we guessed the answer, and then we proved it, but to prove it, we, ho we had to resort to periodic methods. Right, so we couldn't do it, uh, couldn't find a nice closed formula. Um, we couldn't prove it otherwise. So we need a bit, we need, we need to learn a little bit about periodic numbers, right? So we, were, we, we have to, to do some periodic uh, analysis here. So, so let me introduce periodic numbers briefly, right? So recall that a norm on a field, let's say you feel f is a function, right, from the field to the real, positive, non-negative real, such that this condition, so this, this is very familiar, these conditions are satisfied. Uh, forget the p, this p here for a moment, right? I should not have that there. Um, so uh, this is, if, if you look at this, this is very familiar to all of us, right? This is the, this, this looks, this is just the, our useful norm or Archimedean norm on, on, on for, for, the, for, the, for the rational number. So, however, there are, there are, there, there is more. There is also, apart from the usual norm that we, with, I mean, with, which we grew up with, we also have uh, periodic norms. So we can, if we choose a prime P, so let's choose a prime P. So for every real number, for a rational number, we can write it, of course, as a ratio of two integers, and we can write it in this form, right, where m0, n0, and p have no common factor. So, and there is a power alpha here, right? So, the periodic norm of R is defined by this, by this formula, right? This is the periodic norm of R is p to the minus alpha, or is zero if R is zero. And one can check it that it is a, a norm, that, so in fact it satisfies the, 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 um, all these, these, these uh, conditions, um, but it has an extra property, right? So the third, the, the third property this, the, that we had in the, previous, sorry, in the previous slide, this one, is actually stronger in this case. So um, one can check that this third property is satisfied in a, in a stronger sense. So um, if one is not used to this, to, to this, th th there is a way, an intuitive way to think about this norm, and it's this one, right? So if you have a number, the more divisible by p it is, the, it, it, it is smaller in this norm, right? So, so that, that's the intuitive notion that, that one should have, if, I mean, if you're not familiar with periodic, periodic numbers. But why, why are we talking about this? Because, uh, um, so, 
Norms are important because they allow us to perform our loved <laughs> silent delta analysis. Um, so uh, once we have a norm, we may study limits, continuity, convergence, convergence and all other processes of, of analysis, right? And they also allow us to build up number systems, which is what we want, right? We want to build, we want to discuss periodic numbers. So uh, just uh, a reminder, right? So on Q we have the notion of a Cauchy sequence, right? So it's a set of um, a sequence of, of numbers, A sub n, such that given epsilon bigger than zero, there exists n such that the norm of an minus am is smaller than, than epsilon for nm bigger than n. So that's um, um, early undergraduate stuff, so. Um, so two norms are said to be equivalent if they give rise to the same Cauchy sequence, sequences. So, so, um, so norm one is equivalent to norm two if every sequence is Cauchy with respect to, 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 the, to norm one. Um, and it's Cauchy with respect to the second one and vice versa, vice versa, right? And of course there is a trivial norm that is, that is zero if R is zero or one otherwise. But then, uh, even though this sounds overwhelming, it is not because Ostrowski came up with a, with a very nice theorem that says that the non-trivial norm is equivalent to either the usual Archimedean norm or the Piadic norm for some prime P, right? So, so we have the usual norm or the Piadic norm that, that I defined before. And so now using, so now we, could, we, we can build number systems uh, using all these the possible norms, right? So we use the Archimedean norm to construct, uh, construct the real numbers from the, from the rational numbers, right? In a well-known way. So, but, you use, but if you use instead the Piadic norm, then you, what you get is, 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 is some new, 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 new numbers, a, new, a new, new field, which is called the Piadic, the Piadic numbers. And you are either familiar with this or not. I mean, if you're familiar, <laughs> if you're not familiar with these periodic numbers, you, you, I mean, the, the all, one can show that the elements of QP have, they all have, they, they, you, can, you can express them in this way, right? So there's a series in P, right? So the powers of P, right? Again, you think of P as a, as, as a, as a small, like an, an expansion in a small parameter. And um, these alphas take values between zero and integer, that take values between zero and p minus one, right? So, um, and of course you can, you can, this is, you, you, you can, you can um, try to find the algebraic closure of these, of these things. And this is very easy for the real numbers, right? You just have to add the, the square root of minus one and that's fine. But this is a monster. I mean, at least in my mind, <laughs> it's just, it's, I mean, they get, uh, uh, understanding what this is is actually quite hard. I mean, there, there is a very nice book by Koblitz that, that, that has a nice explanation on, on what this, this completion and algebraic closure of the, this whole thing. Okay, so we have um, an idea of what periodic numbers are. So now we're going to use, to use this. So now this, this is where we're, we're going to get into the real, really nice stuff and this I mean, is this, after so many years, still kind of on the borderline of what I understand, really. So, um, so this is what I'm going to describe now. I'm, we're going to get to a formula, an exact formula to count points, but that, that is based on the, on the work, on the work of, of Dork, right? So let's consider, we're going to consider um, a character, right? From FP to, to this monster thing. Right, and uh, in fact, we can do it for FQ, but I, I, I rather focus on FP because it's easier, and it, it, it just bear in mind that this can be generalized easily to 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 FQ. Right. So, so this this would be a non-trivial character, which is additive, meaning this, right, and it is of order p, meaning this. And, of, and, and we map zero, the, the zero, additive zero here, to, to one in there. So, so again, this is just a piadic version of a character of a commutative group, right? Maps into the complex numbers. Now, of course, 
now the, the question that one would ask is, is, is there such a thing, right? You, you have to, so, and his work, I mean, Dork's work is actually, was actually about constructing uh, um, such an object. So, but let's, let's assume we, we, we have such a character for a moment, right? Let's suppose we have it. So let's take a point X, right? In our case, X, uh, um, well, let's, let's, take, let's, let's take an element X in FP. And actually, no. Let's take an element, this X here should be an X on the bar, right? Let's take X to be in our ambient space, right? In, is we, in our case, we are talking about FP to the fifth, right? But this, is, this could be more general, it could be F, F, FP to the N. So some power. So let, let's take a point in the ambient space where this hypersurface sleeps, and let's consider this sum, right? So this is a sum over, over, over Y that lives in FP. So this is your favorite poly polynomial. And this, this, is this, delta of this, this delta function is defined here uh, like this, right? When the argument is zero, then when, when the argument is zero, this gives you one, and when the, ar the argument is not zero, this gives you zero. So, so let's see what this does, right? So when, when x, when x is, when for, for a given x like here in, in, in your ambient space, the, the polyno this, the polyno this polynomial equation is not satisfied, um, the sum on the left-hand side here gives you, gives you this, right? When y is zero, you get one. When y is one, you get theta of p. When y is two, you get theta of p squared, and so on, right? Because it's an additive character, right? And so on. But that is zero because it's a, it's a character of order p, right? So you, so you actually get zero when, when, the, when x doesn't satisfy the polynomial equation. But when x satisfies the polynomial equation, right, the left hands the sum, gives you p because when it, when it does you get zero here so you get you get you, you get you get t of zero which is one so you get one p times so this is why you get what you have on the right hand side right okay. so now let's let's take that that equation right this equation and sum take the sum on each side so let's sum the, the equation. We are going to sum now over these objects on, on each side. So let's sum over on each side, right? And of course, when you do that, when you do that, well, you get the sum on the left-hand side, and on the right-hand side, you get p times the number of points. You get precisely what you're counting, right? Because the delta gives you one every time x is a solution of the polynomial equation. Right, so you get um, you get that. Okay, so so if we have such a character, then this gives you a formula, and you can you can um, you can you can do this computation uh, for your favorite polynomial. It doesn't have to be color. You have your favorite algebraic variety, right? Okay, so. So now, how about the character, right? So, so I, I don't think um, there is really time to get into all the details, which I don't even know them. I mean, I don't understand very well. So, um, but what he did is the following. He constructed the character, this character theta, in terms of Gaussons, right, of this type. So this is the character. This is, this, um, this, is, this is a Gaussian, I'm calling Gn, right? And this, he, this object, sorry? So, so, and this object is the Tachmuller representative of x for each, for each x here. So if you don't know what this is, but it's just, uh, you take, if, you, if, I t if I define the Tachmuller, Tachmuller of, if x is in Fp, and I call capital X the Tachmuller of x, then x is a solution of this equation in Zp, where Zp, are, are those are the, the integers, the, the periodic integers, right? So Zp is, is to Qp, uh, is uh, what Z is to Q, right? So these are the periodic integers, right? In fact, the periodic integers are those, those P 
Reykjavik that in this, this, in this series, so for any element, if you have an element in, in QP, right, then uh, the element, uh, you, as I said, you can write it as, as a sum in zero alpha i p to the i, right, where these alpha i check values between zero, between zero and p minus one, is a periodic integer if, if n zero when n zero is zero, right, is, is, is positive. <coughs> right, so, <coughs> so it doesn't have any negative powers of p. Right. So, um, okay, so um, I, I, I'll give later an intuitive notion of, of the Tack Mueller um, representative. So, um, this Gn, right, <coughs> this Gaussian is, uh, again, if you're not familiar with this, this is a, a, a pianic version of, 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 of what uh, the, the, the classical gamma function is, right? It's analogous to the classical gamma function, right? So recall, so this is the your old classical gamma function, right? And this, this, if you look at this, this is a, the product of an additive character times a multiplicative character. And that's precisely what we have here. So this is very, you can, you can see the, 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 the similarities. And in fact, what this, 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 will, this, will, what this will be is a piadic version of, 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 of it will give you what the, a piadic gamma function, in fact. So if I, no, I can invert, so in terms of these Gaussons, Right, one can expand the character, right? So this is, this is just inverting, I'm just inverting this, this, this relation, right? I'm, I'm writing theta as an expansion, right, like this. So, so that, that there is no, no much of a mystery to that, right? So, so um, these, ga these, these Gaussons, of course, uh, can, can actually were given by, by there is, the, the precise relation between the Gaussons and the Piadi gamma function uh, were given by Gross and Koblitz. I mean, it's just this equation here. And they satisfy a similar uh, reflection formula similar to the, uh, similar to, to the one we have for, for classical gamma functions. So, so here you have a g to the minus m, right? So this is, so you, can, you, can, you can write g to the minus m as uh, one over g, g n right, with a p there, so and gn is, is this, right? So you can see that every time you have this, you can, you, you, you have piadic gamma functions here and, 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 and in, 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 a, in a series of powers of, of x, right? Now for the quintic, so what, do, what does it, let's do, so now this, I mean, uh, this, 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 this computation will be, goes parallel to the computation mod p, in fact. Right, so, um, so for the quintic, we have, we, this is the formula, right? So this is the character, right? So I, I'm splitting, I'm taking first the value when y is zero there, so then that gives you a one here, and, but then, you, then, then you're summing over x, so that this gives you p to the phi over p, so this is this first term, and then we, got, uh, we have a second term, which is some y or, over p star only. Right, and then we use the, the multiplicative, the additivity property of, the, of this character, and we insert the polynomial, right, that is here, is here in the, in the board, right, this polynomial, we insert it in, in here. So that, this, so this, this, this character now splits into the, in, into, into the product of six characters, one for each term in the polynomial, right, with a y there. So this is this, is this, this, this polynomial, that contains the, this monomial that contains the product of all the x's, and then we have all the all the other terms, right, the, 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 to contain x i to the fifth, right. And now using the formula that we had before, right, this this formula here, this this one, you can you can use that in each of in each of these terms, right. So for example, you take y x i for any any of the i's here to the fifth, and that would that would look like this. So, 
Right, so then that, that, would look like, that would look like this, so you plug it in, and then following steps that are rather similar to the ones we did for the, for the, for the um, mod P case, this is what you get. You get, a, you get, you get some, 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 um, some expansion in powers of the, of the, of the algebraic parameter, right? So, so let me tell you what the, what the objects there. Do, do you want to see steps in between? Yes? Step, yes? No? Steps in between? Yes? Yes. The steps in between from, from here, right? Yeah. Then, when, then one uses this in there, and then what you get is this is to some formula, there's some coefficients that include the g's, and, and, and of course you get, you, get, you get powers of this, right? That then you, you massage a little bit the equation and, 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 and you get an expression of this sort. Yeah, right. So one gets, so one gets an, a, a, a sum that this, uh, clearly will give you a, a, a power series in, in lambda, right? Remember that this lambda is related to this psi. So this lambda is, is, uh, is five psi to the minus five, to the minus five. So, um, so, the, you, so you get a, 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 an expansion, right? And in, in, I mean, at least intuitively, you can see that those bet betas, right, will have, will, will be products of these g's, right? Of the, of these, um, these betas will be products of the g's, right? So they are given in terms of Gaussians of these g's, or equivalently, I mean, using the gross coverage formula in terms of, of the other gamma functions. Right, this V here is this, is a, so I have rearranged the, 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 so you get an answer, right? And because we know the periods, <laughs> you, you have, it happens that you can rearrange, men, uh, re rearrange them in such a way that, that you can classify the terms in such a way that, 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 that you get precisely the periods, so. So this, this um, gamma, this gamma V is just, a, is just a number. The Vs here correspond to, 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 um, to vectors of, we have five entries in, in and they are, they are just, there is one that is two zero zero zero. And so these you have um, plus permutations, and these are 20 and then three, two, zero, zero, zero. 20, uh, 2, 1, 1, 0, 0, times 30, and um, uh, 2, 2, 3, 1, 1, 0, 0, 30. So those, 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 these gammas here are just, the, are just permutations of these, of the, the possible permutations of these, of these numbers here. Right, so, and, and, and there is, what you find is that you can classify your terms such that the coefficients correspond to, to, uh, to one of these, right? Um, right, so, um, sorry? Yes, of course, exactly, there is, there is one that, that for the, if you do the, we did do that first, actually. <laughs> it makes sense, right? The cubic in P2, right? You take the cubic in P2, right? You get, you get, all you get is a term, right? It's, it's, um, uh, two, one, and that's it. You get, you get, you get terms associated to, to, to right? So. Um, Sorry? Uh, I mean, the, the computation mode P is the one, this one that, that you can find in the scrap of the curves that, 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 that the, the one mode P was done or a, a long time ago and I, somebody told us that Manin did that computation when he was 17 but somebody else told us that that wasn't true. So, uh, so it's, I mean, you can ask. I mean, if somebody knows the, the real story. 
but this computation, this, 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 I mean, um, I don't know, um, I don't know whether when, at the moment there are lots of, uh, do, uh, do, yeah, you're, no, you're right, you're right, this is, this dork. I mean, in fact, uh, actually, very good, uh, I'm glad you mentioned this because I, I'll show you something. There is, there is a paper that, um, um, so, These are, this, this example is one of the, there's the dork, called the dork pencil, right? But he did this computation, he did, he did computations for the zeta function. And um, the, as I think, yeah. Um, I, I, I was going to show this tomorrow, but I, I'll, I'll, I'll bring it about tomorrow. But of course nowadays this, there, are, there are lots of people who have done computations um, uh, that, uh, computations using, use, using this. Not, not just for the Quinty but for many other examples. Um, including, including, uh, including elliptic curves and case resurfaces and yeah. But I can't pin down my, my the thing who did for this one first, but I think it's, uh, I think you're right. I think <coughs> what, I don't know, I don't yeah, know it might be tough. Yeah. It's there. Yeah, this there. Might, yeah. I don't know what it was. Well, but you see, it was Gauss. Yeah, Montpellier was Gauss. For the cubic in P2. Yeah, Montpellier was Gauss. As Fantastic. So it wasn't Manin. So it's yeah. true that it wasn't Manin. Very good. <laughs> so the, yeah, okay. <laughs> so maybe Manin did it too, but yeah, that doesn't mean so Gauss did it first. Okay. Wow, great, <laughs> thank you, <laughs> very good. Um, so, yeah, so I, yeah. Anyway, I, I'll, I'll bring next time on to be a, bring a bunch of references for people who have done computations. Um, right, so, okay, so let me. Um, Okay, but so let me let me comment a little, just a little bit about about this. So these these coefficients are closely related to the coefficients in the series expansions of the periods around the this regular singular point lambda equals to zero that that, that we have um, that that we had in the last lecture, in fact. So, but let me show you more, right? So for the for the first the first term. The term that for which this v is just this, this entry here. Um, I mean, there is a reason why this is this, but I, I will get into that, that detail. But um, what you get is, is 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 the contribution from the principal period, right? This is this is this is the periodic version of this factor that we have for the fundamental period, right? Which is five m factorial m factorial to the fifth, right? This, this apart from factors of p, that's that's what that's what you have there. But then the other for the other the other contributions for these other v's here, what you have is the other period. So I so I'm showing you here the computation mod p, right? Um, so so this so this is the fundamental period, and this is the period with one logarithm. This is a logarithmic derivative respect of lam lambda, and um, this here. This term here, it corresponds to the. Oh, remember that in in just just a, a reminder, right? For the for, for a Calabria manifold, we had this Hodge diamond. We had this Hodge diamond, right? Um, So that's for any Calabria threefold. Uh, I mean, at least those that that have v1 equals to zero. And um, so this, the sums here, these are the Betty numbers, and this is important to know later for the zeta function, right? So this is v0, v0 is one, v1 is zero, v2 is h11, v3 is the sum, right? So this is important. B3 is two times uh, one 
plus h to 1. So and b4 is the same as b2, and, and b5 is 0, and b6 is the same as b0, which is 1, right? So if for the case of the quintic, h to 1 is 101, and this is 204, right? So and the, the Betty numbers count the number of, of, of cycles independent in, in homology, or if you or the dual version of that, it counts the number of, of um, closed three forms, modulo exact forms, right? So, so, um, so we are expecting, and we have as many periods, as many periods, right? The periods are integrals over all these cycles, right? So we have as many periods as, as cycles, right? So, so um, we are expecting 204 periods, right? We have, no, we have 204 periods. We are so, so, so we were expecting, in fact, um, the periods to appear um, in, in this counting, and they do. So these these are the, the other the, these are the the, the the other periods. So in, in the case, as just again, what we discussed before, right? In the case of the quintic, in the case of the quintic, these two hundred the, the the period satisfy the satisfy um, uh, um, differential. The Picard-Fuchs equation is of order 204, but because of the symmetries of this manifold, this this broke down into blocks, right? Of uh, four. So these are the principal periods, right? So that's the that's the first contribution there, the contribution of F0 and F1, right? So, and then, um, then you have, this is two times 100. So we, I said that there were, there were um, 100 differential equations of degree two, which are just classical hypergeometric functions. And this is what you have here, right? So the, now there is something really very nice. Something I haven't said, is that this, the, the, so this, this polynomial, the polynomial that we have been working with is smooth but for almost all values of psi. So, so this x psi, say, is smooth for every value of psi, say, over the complex numbers for the time being, except You can check that when x to the fifth is one, this 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 is this is singular. Right. So this counting doesn't care about whether you have singularities or not. In fact, so you just this. So for for the smooth case, you don't have this term, right? But for the for the for the for the for the for the, for the um, singular case. You get you get this extra term, this extra contribution, right? So, so this formula uh, gets uh, gets gets this, this extra term that, that and that will lead to a, to an extra factor in your in your zeta function, right? So as as, as you, you have a family of zeta functions that for each value of psi, and then when you hit uh, one of these values, so something drastic happens to your zeta function, right? Some some of some 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 things actually vanish, and some the, and then but new thing new factors appear, and we will see that we will see how that happens later. I mean the, this 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 is the next note. It's a note on 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 the type of singularities. If you know about singularities, the the you can check that you have your manifold, and then when you when you when you when you get to these values of psi. You get a number. You get actually 125 singularities, right? Over the place. And when you start, you zoom this one of these, and you look at it, you, and you study it. You, what you discover is that these are just ordinary double points. In the physics literature, these are called conical singularities. There's a lot of fun to be had in this. <laughs> this happens in physics. Um, so, um, so, uh, so this computation, I said, makes sense. Even even in these singular cases, right? So so this is very nice because, as you know, we are going to now put this to what's next is to put all this together, 
to construct the, the, the zeta function, but then that, that means you can write down the zeta function even at the singular, uh, at the singular uh, point, right? Uh, which the via conjectures are not, uh, are, not um, are only valid really except one, which I will discuss later too, um, are only valid for smooth cases. So, so okay, so of course you, this is only mod p, so there is an extra term here, p squared, but they, I mean, when you write down, when you, when you, so, so, but this is the close, the close formula, if you like, for this, for the exact formula, right? Okay, so, um, so just a remark, what's, oh, I'm going faster than expected, so just a remark, so, so Dork's character can be, gener can be generalized to FQ, as I said, and we can similarly compute the, the rational points over FQ, right? So I won't do that because I think you can, you can use your imagination. <laughs> that goes. Yes, yes, I, I said that last year. Yeah, that, that's right, yes. Yeah, for P equals to five, you are in trouble, right? Because <laughs> you have a five there and this is a polynomial of degree five. But yes, so at, at the moment, uh, I, I, I'm not including P equals to five. We will see what happens with that, with the L function actually, with P is five later. And, um, I am and in this formula, the, actually the formula looks just like that too, but the computation I did is not valid when psi is zero. Something else happens there, but the formula in the end is, is very, it looks, it looks similar to that, yes. Um, so, right, there is, so, there's, there's, something, there's, so, there's also something horrible happening when psi or psi goes to infinity. Right. In this particular case, the physicists call this the large complex structure limit. And it's a very important limit in, in computing like uh, mirror maps and all that. Um, and I'll, com I'll, com I'll come back to this case. Um, um, you can still do the computation in that case, in fact. So, so um, uh, I'll come back to that when we discuss the earth functions. Right. So. Um, so, so this, this is what comes next, right? So now we have, we have a formula that, that and, and we have a formula that as for the family, not just for, for a given variety. So we have a formula for the family and over FP and over F, FQ and so on. So now we put this together in, 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 a, this, in the zeta function, right? So we have to remember that I've been, uh, I've been working on over FP Right, whereas I should be working, uh, uh, um, I, what I really want are the numbers of projective solutions over P. Some, somebody was asking about that. You were asking about that. So, that's, uh, so instead of mu, what we want to work is to with N, right? So now I'm going to switch from mu to N. So uh, in constructing, I mean, just in constructing uh, P4 from, from C5, Right, so you can think of P4, of course, as C5, right? So you to put homogeneous coordinates, this is coordinate five, you take care of the zero and you divide by your star, C star action. And what this means is that you identify all the points with um, the points of this sort, five where lambda belongs to C star. So what we do is to take, we subtract the origin, but this is what this is, and then we divide by, by, by P, in the case of FP, you divide by P minus one, right, which is the, 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 the FP star version in this action, in this case, right. So, so, so the R here means that, that we are working now over, over F, F, FP to the R, right? So, so we have one number for each, for, for one of these numbers for each r, and we put these numbers together in this famous zeta function, right, uh, given by this formula. Right? It depends on, on, on a form of parameter t and lambda, of course, we'll have a family of these, and of course it depends on p, on the, on, on, on the value, on a value of p. I should have had a, had a p here, right? This is, this, this zeta function gives you the, the, the 
the the the Riemann the Riemann zeta function when you take when you take when your your space is a point, right? Take n, n r equals one for r, so then this sum here, right, gives you it gives you this logarithm, right? So so the the zeta function of a point, if you like, is one over one minus t. So and and then if you substitute t for p to the minus s and you take the product of all the primes, then you get this 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 object that has been the subject <laughs> of many talks here, right? So um, okay. So I think I'm going to stop here because um, um, what comes, I mean, as I said, I, but I, what we want now is to discuss what the zeta function is for this example, at least. And um, I will start next time with uh, discussing the Bell conjectures, which of course they are not conjectures anymore, um, and, uh, and and see how this this fits with the with what we what, what we have. Okay.